Greetings everybody, this is Leviathan here, and today I've got a new multi-shot video for you, but it's actually similar to one you've probably already seen if you've been on the channel before. This is a final version of the Unhallowed Essence multi-shot with Captain Crimson for Torment Rifts that I tested out on the PTR. Uh, this is not really changed because a lot of the things stayed the same coming out of PTR to live. So the only refinements here are just uh, messing with a few different skills, trying to think about some of the other passives or even items that you could slot in. Um, we'll talk about those as we go throughout the video, but I wanted to at least start right now with a exhibition for you. So again, we're simulating the same thing as we did in our very last video that you may have seen on the channel, which is the uh, Unhallowed Essence multi-shot Captain Crimson in Greater Rifts. Definitely check that out. Should be a link to that in the video description, along with a written version of this build as well a written guide over on diablo fans so i know a lot of you guys want that type of stuff check all the good links in the video description lots of great information there um you can see i basically try to make sure that i limited my dexterity um so that it wasn't like off the charts with all of our paragon and things like that um you know good simulations for early in the season and stuff should try to deflate their increased damage as much as possible so we have a nice rift that we opened up into here. Uh, got the open map, which is where multi-shot really shines. Uh, even more so though in some of the bad maps, like when you're in the keep deaths or just the ones where it's a lot of rooms and hallways and stuff, you'll still be able to do really well because you have a ton of movement speed with this build and obviously a ton of damage to just clear screens. So you can take those average to mediocre regular rifts and turn them into solid ones with multi-shot and the great ones, these type of maps, you'll just absolutely fly through. You can see the gameplay is, you know, very standard multi-shot. You're just spraying and praying, killing everything while you uh, search the map, pick up your DBs, pick up your legendaries. Uh, anytime you come across a pylon, since we are using Flavor of Time, or a shrine, it's going to be great because that'll produce an elite for you. And then with the pylons in particular, you get the double result. A lot of these rifts aren't going to last very long, so you, you won't be under the effect of that double pylon for very long anyways. Um, so that's kind of one of those items where it could be flexible. We may or may not uh, want to use one, but there are some benefits to it, which I'll discuss in just a moment. But basically there you can see, very quick clear, from when we entered the rift to when we close it here in just a moment, it was 90 seconds. You can go back and time it if you want to. So that's like the super high end of what you can expect from a really nice multi-shot setup. And there it is again with the on-screen uh, stats right there, a little under 13k with the dexterity. Even uh, removed a bunch of gems from the gear and all that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about some of the details in terms of what you can expect. Here is that written guide that I was telling you about. This is on Diablo Fans again, so check the video description if you want to take a look at this. Um, I In the written area here, I talk a lot about some of the variations and things. Because there, there are quite a few options that you can go with. Uh, in terms of skills and items and things like that. But I want to swap back, like we did in our last video, to the actual live version of the game here. Because um, again, Diablo Fans isn't quite yet updated with the new powers and sets and stuff. So, um, multi-shot. Same as it, it is, uh, you know, discipline matters a lot, so make sure you've got it on your chest, your quiver, and your bow. Uh, you will have a Ring of Royal Grandeur to help you complete the six-piece set. And the three-piece set of Captain Crimson. Captain Crimson, amazing for multi-shot because it synergizes really well with what you already want and use, which is CDR, to make sure you hit that 100% uh, uptime on Vengeance with a Dawn in the Cube. And also RCR, which you get a big chunk of from your weapon, from your Yang's Recurve. And then both uh, CDR and RCR are granted to you from one of the set bonuses here in Captain Crimson. So just really nice synergy. And then the resource cost reduction is feeding into your damage reduction, which you can see we don't use a gold wrap in this build anymore, which was kind of the staple for a lot of T16 builds. Um, we're benefiting instead from just having a nice resource cost reduction equaling into damage reduction. And then we get the nice damage boost, which is a multiplicative damage boost with the CDR. Um, so the reason I was talking about the amulets, I am using Flavor of Time. I do think though that you can go with uh, a Hellfire amulet because if you can farm a really good one, it's going to go a long way. There are so many great passives that you can utilize when you're speed farming regular rifts. Um, the ones I'm currently using are Tactical Advantage, just for the extra movement speed. Same thing with Hot Pursuit. Ambush, just so we can get more one-shot kills on stuff. Really nice upfront damage. 
And then as a hardcore player, I want awareness because there are going to be those moments we're not invincible anymore, like I was saying, with the uh, no longer using gold wrap. So just in case there's a molten you happen to get popped by or something, I want to have awareness. But if you're playing softcore, you can definitely try to aim for blood vengeance just for even more um, resources coming back to you when you pick up orbs or pick up health globes. Get your hatred and discipline back up. Steady aim's nice because you are ranged and you likely won't have any enemies getting to you, so it's a nice boost to your DPS. Um, and ballistics can be good too, just to kill the Rift Guardian even faster. And elites, that's where this will matter the most. Against trash, like you just one shot stuff already anyway, so you don't need it that much. Um, going back to our gear. The only other option for the amulet would be squirts, but again, it's, it's an item that I'm really becoming less and less uh, enchanted with because it is so hard to keep the bonus up. You get hit by a lot more things than you would think. The only real way to utilize it would be if you have a shield of some sort, and then the shield protects you from taking actual damage. Uh, best class that utilizes it uh, right now is the wizard, like Veer Archon Wizard. Uh, even if you equip like a Molten Wildebeest Gizzard, which I tested, you still get hit through that shield eventually and it drops off your uh, squirts, so it's just not worth it. I'd rather go either Hellfire Amulet, which should be easier to get a good one of, and eventually once you pick up a nice flavor of time, go for that. Especially because you have CDR here as well, so it just feeds into your Captain Crimson. Uh, otherwise, everything else is pretty standard. Bracers, we're going with Nemesis Bracers to get more elites out of, like I said, the pylons and the um, shrines. However, there is some option to, let me get back to our cube here. We have Warzekian Arm Guards cubed as our other bracer. These are interchangeable. The Warzekians give you 50% increased movement speed when you break stuff. And since you're multi-shotting and moving through those maps, you'll break a ton of stuff. Uh, so it's a nice movement speed increase. Um, whichever one you find that has good stats on it, wear that cube the other. But another thing you could do too is still wear Nemesis Bracers and change the cube item to Gloves of Worship, so that way you're even happier to see shrines. If you're going to do long stints of key farming, that actually works out pretty nicely because the uh, shrine powers persist between rifts, whereas the double pylon duration, as soon as you close the rift, it turns that off. So you're not going to keep you know, the double pylons going from uh, rift to rift, but the shrines will, so you can keep 10 minutes of fleeting, 10 minutes of... Um, the resource cost and cooldown one as well, which can be nice empowered shrine. Um, so that's something to consider. That's more of a player preference kind of thing. I, I personally just like the movement speed from Warzekians. Uh, a little more guaranteed there. Um, otherwise, the rings is something else to keep in mind too. I would say the ultimate like version of this build, when things are really going well and your damage is really nice, your gear is getting to a good level, your paragon is getting to a good level, you would go with Stone of Jordan in Avarice Band. And that way you're benefiting from um, not losing Everest Band since normally you go focus and restraint and then the cube item for the jewelry slot used to be Everest Band but now of course it's Ring of World Grander mandatory. But this brings your Everest Band back in so that when you are picking up gold and since we use a boon of the Hoarder if you max it out every time you kill an enemy it drops gold. When you pick up the gold it activates your Everest Band power so that gives you this gigantic pickup radius. And then you're going to continue to pick up gold which is huge for continuing to empower your greater rifts throughout the season. And you'll also pick up the orbs from when you kill the elites. And that, you may not even think about it, it just shaves off so much time on your regular rifts. Because you don't have to like go around left, right, center, try to pick up all the uh, orbs. Instead you can just literally keep moving through the rift and the orbs will just get swept up in your huge pickup radius. Um, it just keeps you moving forward, which is really important for speed. Uh, as far as the Stone of Jordan, it's just really good because it gives you a little bit more max discipline. Gives you elemental damage, damage against elites, like it's all stuff that works really nicely for um, regular rifts in particular for your mission. As far as the gems go, uh, we have Zai's Boon of the Hoarder, and you're like, whoa, what is that, a Golgok of Swiftness? So let's just talk about the others first. Zai's is a mandatory, makes perfect sense for multi-shot gem. It just always works because you're always at range, and so you get a lot of damage increase from that. Really great multiplier to your damage. Boon of the Hoarder we just talked about. It's really good gold utility, and with the secondary there, you get more movement speed when you pick up gold, so that's nice. And now Gogok. Traditionally, you would go Bane of the Powerful, so I mean, you can definitely keep that in mind. Uh, that's probably the one you want to start with, but again, when you're really min-maxing, when you don't feel like you need the extra damage from the Bane of the Powerful, the Gogok is a really cool option, because it's going to give you attack speed, CDR, and dodge. The dodge you don't care as much about, it can help sometimes. But the attack speed's nice because it'll actually uh, get you through the animation of your vaults faster. So technically you're just moving through rifts faster, it's more speed. 
and also you're firing your multi shot out faster which is nice but also more cdr which again feeds into our captain crimson and n things not to be uh, forgotten we have some skills that are cdr skills like preparation and figuration i'll get into the skills in just a moment so being able to have a really low cooldown on something like that when you are using your shadow power shadow glide to get more movement speed and using up your discipline which can then kind of affect your damage output it's really nice to be able to just pretty pretty often get your discipline right back from activating that preparation invigoration um, i did mention as well like you know, focus and restraint probably your early season options and then eventually transition to these rings um, so that's that and diamonds uh could be in gear if you feel like you need the defense if you're playing hardcore you're worried about dying maybe go diamonds in gear but traditionally i would go emeralds just more damage faster clears um skills pretty standard skills when you're not uh using focus and restraint there's no generator in here so you get to include uh like i was mentioning shadow power shadow glide which gives you a nice 30 percent increased movement speed when you activate it you can just kind of activate it when you're going around the rift looking for the next elite pack um, preparation and vig uh, that's there for the max discipline in general to bump this up but you also want to use it whenever you're running low on discipline which you will tap into it just from the shadow power and also from vaulting vaulting is there with some movement speed skill or movement skill lots of movement speed multi-shot arsenal your damage dealer wolf companion for the extra damage if you get to the point where you don't even need wolf you can also then pick up ferrets and they'll they'll give you more gold <laughs> like honestly at times you might want to min max your gold just so you can keep empowering greater rifts it sounds kind of silly but it does help and you couldn't go bat you could go bat if you feel like you're running into hatred issues you really really should not if you're running into hatred issues it's probably something else you can change instead or your build is missing some important component and then vengeance seethe of course for that big hatred return uh hatred uh generation when this is active and you should have it active 100 percent of the time um talked about the passives already so that's pretty much it and if you do go focus restraint version then i would get rid of shadow power and put uh evasive fire with focus back in that's your best um generator for multi shots so throw that back into the mix i don't really think there's anything else to discuss this is good for solo and groups you should be able to carry your group with crazy uh multi-shot damage um you can even make a version of this for bounties i might circle back and make a video for that so definitely make sure you like the video if this helps you out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos, especially if I do end up making like a bounty version. I have some Shadow Impale stuff coming to the channel soon. So if you want more Demon Hunter guides, make sure you check that out. Don't forget to follow the stream, twitch.tv slash leviathan111. Again, 24-hour stream coming to you for the start of Season 18 this Friday, August 23rd. It's going to be great, man. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm playing groups. I'm going to start out with the Demon Hunter, so you know, there'll be plenty of this action happening. Um, come by, ask some questions. If you have questions right now, put them in the comments section. I'm ready to talk to you guys. I talk back all the time. So until the next video, please have a great day. Thank you very much for checking this one out. And I hope you will subscribe and check out more videos on the channel. Until next time, everyone. Adios.